Praise the Lord Jesus, everybody. Another God Sees It video coming to you regarding the origins of some of the traditions of Christmas. This one specifically delving into the question of where did the tree and the wreaths come from. And we're going to go back to the very beginning, as far as we know from history and archaeology, even before the advent of when it was called Yule and when uh, some of those cultures uh, celebrated under that term in the Yule God. So here we go. Two key figures in the origin of Christmas are Nimrod, a great-grandson of Noah and his mother and wife. That's right, mother and wife. Semiramis, known as Ishtar and Isis. Nimrod, known in Egypt as Osiris, was the first was the founder of the first world empire at Babel, later known as Babylon. From ancient sources such as the Epic of Gilgamesh and the records unearthed by archaeologists from long ruined Mesopotamian and Egyptian cities, we can reconstruct the subsequent events. After Nimrod's death, 2167 BC, Semiramis promoted the belief that he was a god. She claimed that she saw a full-grown evergreen tree spring out of the roots of a dead tree stump symbolizing the springing forth of new life for Nimrod. On the anniversary of his birth, she said Nimrod would visit the evergreen tree and leave gifts under it. His birthday fell on the winter solstice at the end of December. So there you have it, the, the origins of this tradition. Yep, and even gifts under the evergreen tree. A few years later, Semiramis bore a son, Horus, or Gilgamesh. She declared that she had been visited by the spirit of Nimrod, who left her pregnant with a boy. Horus, she maintained, was Nimrod reincarnated. With a father, mother, and son deified, a deceptive, perverted trinity was formed. There's the satanic counterfeit for you. Semiramis and Horus were worshipped as the Madonna and child. There you have the uh, Catholic origin there, where the Madonna name came from. As the generations passed, they were worshipped under different names in different countries and languages. Many of these are recognizable, so you know you have Jupiter and Aphrodite, Adonis, Ashtoreth, etc. And then regarding wreaths, the Babylonians also used wreaths to represent the nativity of the sun since they were objects that depicted the womb of the earth mother. So you have the sun god, uh, Nimrod, and the earth mother. And that's your tree and the wreath, the female reproductive symbol and the male reproductive symbol. That's why you also have the Catholic monuments are consistent with that. You have St. Peter's Square here, for example. You have the obelisk, the male symbol, inside of the circle, the reproductive symbol of the female. Uh, because, of course, the Catholics, as you saw, if you saw our documentary, Christians and Christmas, does God want us to celebrate it? Uh, I'll link that video in this one as well if you haven't seen it yet. But, of course, it is conclusive and historically irrefutable that the Catholic Church is responsible for bringing the traditions of devil worshipers into the church. And so you have what Tertullian said before the uh, establishment of the Roman Catholic system as we know it today, the apostate pope system and so on. Tertullian, an early bishop, early church, said, On your day of gladness, we Christians neither cover our doorposts with wreaths nor intrude upon the day with lamps. At the call of public festivity, you consider it a proper thing to decorate your house like some new brothel. We are accused of a lower sacrilege because we do not celebrate along with you the holidays. See, at that time, the Christians knew the difference, and they publicly rebuked it. You know, and, and so they knew where these symbols came from, these decorations came from, and what they were all about. That's why he called it decorating your house like a brothel. And if the Catholic Church wants to build some devil-worshipping edifice and put a cross on top of it, it doesn't transform it magically into something Christian. 
They put a cross on it, therefore it's for Christ. No, of course they're doing it deliberately, deceptively, and with subterfuge, but we don't want to do it at all. So let's get back to the Bible. Let's worship God according to His pure word and His pure word alone. And let's never add any traditions of men to it. Let's worship Him in spirit and truth, not some truth and some deception. Not adding most of all the traditions of God-hating devil worshipers to the pure word that instructs us how to worship and follow Him and celebrate Him in spirit and in truth. So please like, share, subscribe if you haven't yet for more to come. And again, if you haven't seen the full documentary, I will link this. It should show up at the upper left-hand corner of this video. And once again, to Jesus Christ be all the glory forever. Amen.